um, from the English department, Mariam Barry and Tom Zimmerman here to help us uh, mm -hmm. cross this, this beautiful <laughs> uh, line between uh, mm -hmm. science and poetry. And I, mm -hmm. I think you're going to have a lot of fun. So I just mm -hmm. want to remind you, we are recording this session. Uh -huh. If you don't want to be on camera, that's fine. We'd mm -hmm. love to see your face, but um, I'm just giving you the heads up. Mm -hmm. So I am mm -hmm. going to turn this over to mm -hmm. Mariam and Tom. Great. And uh, there we go. Thanks, Great. Susan. So with the poetry Zooms that Tom and I do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we usually uh, use the Padlet, uh, which is organized by these categories. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to crash around and look for one that you might mm -hmm. be comfortable to read out loud for us. We're mm -hmm. a pretty small group, so mm -hmm. I'm yeah. hoping everybody feels nice and secure. Mm -hmm. um, the categories that I came up with are beasts, large, small, winged, and slithering, <laughs> uh, the big picture, Mm -hmm. star stuff, plants, and the waters, mm -hmm. super important on the planet that we're uh, living on right now. Mm -hmm. And I think I'll go ahead and share the video that comes with Dead Stars. Oh, cool. By, um, Ada Limon. Ada Limon is currently the poet laureate of our country. Mm -hmm. So she's somebody, it makes sense for us to know and uh, be somewhat aware of her work. I don't remember if this is a video or if it is just mm -hmm. a reading of the poem. So Tom, mm -hmm. can I uh, pick on you and yes. ask you to read Dead Stars for us? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Great. OK, Dead Stars by Ada Limon. So here goes. Out here, there's a bowing even the trees are doing or it's actually bowing probably, right? Out here, there's a bowing even the trees are doing. Winter's icy hand at the back of all of us. Black bark, slick yellow leaves, a kind of stillness that feels so mute, it's almost in another year. I am a hearth of spiders these days, a nest of trying. We point out the stars that make Orion as we take out the trash the rolling containers, a song of suburban thunder. It's almost romantic as we adjust the waxy blue recycling bin until you say, man, we should really learn some new constellations. And it's true. We keep forgetting about Antlia, Centaurus, Draco, Lacerta, Hydra, Lyra, Lynx. Yes. Uh, yeah, sorry? I think uh, it was but, just... Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. But mostly we're forgetting we're dead stars too. My mouth is full of dust and I wish to reclaim the rising, to lean in the spotlight of streetlight with you toward what's larger within us, toward how we were born. Look, we are not unspectacular things. We've come this far, survived this much. What would happen if we decided to survive more, to love harder? What if we stood up with our synapses and flesh and said no, no to the rising tides, stood for the many mute mouths of the sea, of the land? What would happen if we used our bodies to bargain for the safety of others, for earth, if we declared a clean night, if we stopped being terrified, if we launched our demands into the sky, made ourselves so big People could point to us with the arrows they make in their minds, rolling their trash bins out after all of this is over. Oh, nicely wow. done. Wow, wow. That's you a great one. Such yeah. a great I, th I think one of the things that excites me about this mm -hmm. poem is the distance we travel. Uh, we start off in winter, which yeah. is suddenly a landscape that's right in front of us. Yeah. And we think maybe we're going to be talking about the winter sky yeah. with Orion and taking uh, out the trash. Yeah. But then she leaps into this stuff about all the constellations mm -hmm. and about how we're dead. We're made of the same stuff as mm -hmm. the stars. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I love that she leaps from there to talk about Mm -hmm. What if we decided to love harder? What mm -hmm. if we stood mm -hmm. up for the sea, for mm -hmm. the land, 
-hmm. if we mm -hmm. acted so that there would be more after us mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. might come without our actions. Mm -hmm. So for mm -hmm. me, it ends up being this gentle call to arms, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it starts off with something as every day as taking out the trash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good, really great observations, Mariam. Yeah. In fact, I, I, I see Orion every night when I take out the trash. It's in, in, in my in my neck of the wood. It's, it's in the western sky. Yeah, in the winter. So I oh, see that's it. Right. Yeah, yeah, I that's just right. see it. Yeah, and uh, so I have a lot of poems actually with Orion in it because that's probably the only constellation other than the two Dippers or one of the Dippers that I can actually uh, recognize. You know. Well, apparently you're not alone. <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know that. Know, might, be, uh, might be soul siblings there uh, on this, <laughs> but but you know, I think I think about looking at the stars. You know, I always think whenever, even when I was a kid, I remember thinking it makes you feel small and big at the same time, depending on how you look at it. Yes. You know what I mean? You, yes. small, you feel small at first, like, God, I'm so small compared to all that up there. But then you realize, wait a minute, I'm also part of this whole thing, you know? And so you start thinking bigger because you see that expanse out there. I exactly. Think it makes the mind expand to me. Yeah. No, no, I think that's very well said. Um, it's it's funny because it stimulates something very personal with me. My, my middle son, um, his birthday is tomorrow. Ah. And when he was born and... Um, this was on a cold, cold night when he was born and he was born in my home. Mm -hmm. um, we had a midwife mm -hmm. and wow. um, Larry, my husband, knows a lot about stars and telescopes and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. And he went outside. My mm -hmm. son was born at 9 p.m. Uh -huh. and he went outside and he saw Orion yep. and he wanted it to be Ben's middle name. So Ben's uh, middle name is Ben Orion. That's wild. Um, I wow. always think of winter in oh, this, or like yeah. Orion is kind of wow. a special thing. And it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of um, big in that sense. It's like, you know, yeah. this birth. Uh, that's really, me. that's really something. Wow. Oh, that's I cool. can see where that would deepen this for you. Mm -hmm. And I had forgotten that we were both on the home birth team. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's good. A good reminder. Cool. cool. Does anybody else have any thoughts or maybe some questions if there was a part of it that confused you or that you wondered about? No, that's fine. Um, I will go ahead and read one since I picked okay. on Tom <laughs> and then we can see if we have any noble volunteers ah, yeah, that's the spirit. who have picked out a poem or would like me to assign them a poem, which I'm more than happy to do. Um, this one uh, is something I just found like in the last two weeks. Hmm. It's hmm. called Watching My Friend Pretend Her Heart is not breaking by mm. Rosemary Watala Traumer. And I think I typed this one. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Here's hoping there right. are no typos. Oh, is it not going to show up? No, I don't know. It's spinning. Yeah. This is a poet I'm not familiar with, Mari. I'm interesting. Yeah. Good find. Slowly oh, it's coming up, I think. Slow. Super slow. There it is. Yeah. So sing out if you find a typo that I missed. <laughs> Watching my friend pretend her heart is not breaking. On Earth, just a teaspoon of neutron star would weigh six billion tons. Six billion tons. The equivalent weight of how much railway it would take to get a third of the way to the sun. It's the collective weight of every animal on earth times three. Mm. Six billion tons sounds impossible until I consider how it is to swallow grief. Mm -hmm. Just a teaspoon and one might as well have consumed a neutron star. How dense it is, how it carries inside it the memory of collapse, how difficult it is to move then how impossible to believe that anything could lift that weight. There are many reasons to treat each other with great tenderness. One is the sheer miracle that we are here together on a planet surrounded by dying stars. 
One is that we cannot see what anyone else has swallowed. Mm -hmm. Wow. What do you guys That's, think about that one? I love that one. Yeah. I like the factual stuff at the beginning, you know, it's kind of cool. And then it gets personal and kind of, yeah, a little more abstract. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, I was excited to find mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I wonder if there are any people really who haven't experienced the grief of loss, whether it's mm -hmm. through death or changes in relationship or yeah. just maturation. I mean, we right. all uh, lose more as we grow older, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. along with what we've gained. But I like the focus she's taking in here and mm -hmm. saying, Mm -hmm. uh, that we we might as well be kind to one another because right. we don't know what other people have swallowed or have mm -hmm. lived through. Mm -hmm. Does that no, make that's sense, a good message. Mm -hmm. Great. That's a good message, I think, yeah. Yeah, and she's young. I love it when I find mm -hmm. authors who are way younger than me. Because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. at 64, uh, <laughs> there's... There's more and more of those folks about. <laughs> Are there any uh, noble volunteers who'd be up for reading a poem? Uh, Mariam, we have uh, Linda who would like to read The Bear. Oh, good. Oh, great. That's over, over with the slithering stuff. <laughs> uh, is it down or is it up? I, I have it, uh, but yeah, um, you probably want to display it for everybody. There it is. Oh yeah, great. And it has Thank trash. You, Linda. You're welcome. And it has trash cans in it. I, oh, I great. Perfect. Wow, well, we've we got a theme going on. Feeling, but... Yeah, we got a trash can theme here. All right. Uh, the bear. Tonight, the bear comes to the orchard and balancing on her hind legs, dances under the apple trees, hanging onto their boughs, dragging their branches down to earth. Look again. It is not the bear, but some after image of her like the car I once saw in the driveway after the last guest had gone. Snow pulls the apple boughs to the ground. Whatever moves in the orchard, heavy lumbering is clear as wind. The bear is long gone. Drunk on apples, she banged over trash cans that fall night, then skidded downstream. By now she must be logged in for the winter, unless she is choosy. I imagine her as very choosy, sniffing at the huge logs, pawing them, trying each one on for size, but always coming out again. Until tonight. Tonight, sap freezes under her skin. Her breath leaves white apples in the air. As she walks, she dozes, listening to the sound of axes chopping wood. Somewhere she can never catch up to the, tree, to the trees are falling. Chips pile up like snow when she does find it finally. The log draws her in as easily as a forest. And for a while, she continues to see just ahead of her, the moon trapped like a salmon in the ice. Ah, um, nice. You yeah. did that so well, Linda, thank oh, you. Thank you, it's beautiful. Yeah, what did you notice about it? Well, I just love the image of nature. Um, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I like those images too. Yeah, and uh, the, um, the it's it's kind of surprising. Um, it is not the bear, but an after image. So mm -hmm. it's memory. Yeah, and I I think the image of the moon being trapped mm -hmm. like a salmon in ice. It makes me mm -hmm. think of. Mm -hmm. Uh, rivers and their, you know, people who live there mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. imagining the moon as a frozen salmon in the sky. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think mm -hmm. of salmons as being able to curve in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That was fun. Is there another volunteer? I can read anytime you need me, Mariam, but I, I'm just so I'm sort of your safety net. So whatever you want. Yeah, that yeah. sounds great. Um, okay. I can read. Um, I've got a hard connection now, so I should. OK, be... cool. 
So great. Did you find one you wanted or do you want me to? Well, I see the periodic table elements down there. I don't know if there's one affiliated with that one down there, that image, but if not, you no know, I, I get really carried away with these padlets because I can decorate <laughs> them. And the, the table of the elements is just decoration. Oh, that's okay. You could pick yeah. that. I don't care. Um, how about Note to Reality by Tony Hoagland? Mm. Um, he is a poet who, I think he died in 2018, but he is um, he is a really fun, like mm -hmm. funny and wise and deep and silly all at the same time. Okay, note to reality. Without even knowing it, I have believed in you for a long time. When I looked at my blood under a microscope, I could see truth multiplying over and over. Not police sirens, nor history books, not stage three lymphoma persuaded me, but your honeycombs and beetles, the dried blonde vessels of grass thrushed up on the January snow, your postcards of Picasso and Matisse from the museum series of European masters. When my friend died on the way to the hospital, it was not his death that so amazed me, but that the driver of the cab did not insist upon the fare. Quotation marks. What should we put inside them? Shall I say I have been hurt by you, you neglectful monster? Mm -hmm. I speak now because experience has shown me that my mind will never be clear for long. I am more thick skinned and male, more selfish, jealous, and afraid than ever in my life. For my heart is tangled in thy nets, my soul emeshed in cataracts of time, the breeze so cool today, the sky smeared with bluish grays and whites. The parade for the slain police officer goes past the bakery, and the smell of fresh bread makes the mourners salivate against their will. Ah, nice. Wow. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do a cold read of a poem that you haven't even had a chance to read through once, but you did a great job. Oh, Tracy. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's really a lot of fun. Um, in the last decade of his life, Hoagland wrote a lot about um, the cancer that he was fighting and then died from. Um, and I like the way he slips that in. Yeah. Along with his uh, friend who died on the way to the hospital. Mm -hmm. But throughout the whole poem, he shows us how even though we know that we're all here temporarily, that there's death, that we still love living. And that smell of the fresh bread make, makes the mourners salivate against their will um, really encapsulates that for me. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, that's such an instinctive sign of uh, appetite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and bread being life and there's a faintly kind of christian religious sort of thing with the bread too do you know what i mean so there's a lot of stuff kind of going on there right yeah yeah, yeah. and it's a real estate ploy too <laughs> <laughs> is it a real estate ploy how do you see that oh gosh the, uh, that um you you have fresh baked bread smell in a house that you're selling it helps sell oh, the house. Ah, uh, uh, makes oh, sense. Makes total right. sense. Yeah, yeah. Because it is so instinctive. I see what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, wow. That's great. That's that great. Is, yeah. Huh. Very cool. Yeah, when I was reading it and got to the postcards of Picasso and Matisse, my mm -hmm. brain went right. We just went to the Van Gogh Museum. Uh, oh, did you really? Van oh, Gogh wow. A couple weeks ago. Yeah, so then as yeah. I was reading, I was thinking about all the olive tree paintings and everything oh, my brain kind of wandered there but it got me thinking about that uh -huh. yeah, yeah i know this book really explodes doesn't it in the middle i thought that too tracy when he got to the postcard suddenly the thing really opened up didn't it yeah yeah the fact that all of that is in his blood too is really interesting you know it's almost kind of a, an idea that we're all kind of the same stuff again a little bit like this uh, i don't know star poem you know what i mean the fact that all of that is in a person's blood even if only metaphorically do you know what i mean you know, if I'm human, nothing human is alien to me, that kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's well said. I like that. Um, I 
went to that Van Gogh exhibit and uh, was so oppressed by how uh, sardine-like all the humans in the space were. I don't, they said they were going to limit numbers because they got a lot of complaints. Did you hmm. feel like a sardine? In certain areas, like mm -hmm. some of his more famous works, mm -hmm. you know, there were a lot of people, but um, mm -hmm. the one that I was really drawn to, and it's one of his olive trees, but not the one that he's the most famous one. And I forgot what the name of it was, but I just stood, there was hardly anybody mm -hmm. there because mm -hmm. everybody was around Starry Night and some of his uh, bigger ones that he's mm -hmm. so known for. But yeah, there were parts of it that were very crowd-like. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess they just did the best they could, but you know, they were so sold out and they were trying to get as many people through as they could. So, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. wow. Wow. Cool. I know the the other you're talking about. It was very cool. Mm. Um, how uh, this one has a little video with it. It's by Marie oh. Howe called mm -hmm. um, Singularity, and I've got it under the big picture column. Mm -hmm. uh, while you're watching it, think about if there is a poem on the Padlet that you'd mm -hmm. be up for reading or mm -hmm. if you are okay to be assigned. <laughs> so I think if I just do this, um, it should all Yeah, work. looks great. Oh, no. No. Let it click one more second, Mariam, there you go. Let me think. Um, when I was talking with Maria uh, about doing something this evening, I just jotted something in my journal, really. And um, I told her I wanted to read Walt Whitman, and uh, but but I just sort of sent this really this thing too. And she said, oh, read that, read that. And I said, I don't know. Usually I wait about 10 years before I read anything out loud. And this has been about a week. Anyway. I don't know anything about science. I've tried to read these books. My daughter, however, loves physics. I don't understand that. Um, but I was trying to get her to explain to me what the singularity is. And I was reading Hawkins, of course, and then I was trying to read Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by, by Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> I said to her a few weeks ago, I don't believe in the Big Bang. And she said, you don't? I said, no, it's impossible. Who here really believes that we were all, everything that ever is, was once a singularity so dense, it was one thing before it blew up? Raise your hands. <laughs> okay. See, just like not that many over there. So here it is, the singularity. Do you sometimes want to wake up to the singularity we once were? So compact, nobody needed a bed or food or money. Nobody hiding in the school bathroom or home alone pulling open the drawer where the pills are kept. For every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you, remember? There was no nature, no them, no tests to determine if the elephant grieves her calf or if the coral reef feels pain. Trashed oceans don't speak English or Farsi or French. Would that we could wake up to what we were when we were ocean. And before that, when earth was sky and animal was energy and rock was liquid and stars were space and space was not at all, nothing. Before we came to believe humans were so important, before this awful loneliness. 
Hmm. Can molecules remember it? What once was before anything happened? Can our molecules remember? No I, no we, no one, no was, no verb, no noun yet, but only a tiny, 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 tiny dot brimming with is, 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 all, everything. Home. Thank you. <laughs> She's so cool. Mm, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. What do you guys think about that? What did you notice? Is, is, is. I know. <laughs> I know. You're great. <laughs> I know. Um, I first found the poem on the page. So it was mm -hmm. fun to find this video. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I love the silence after she says the line about wow. loneliness. Yeah. The, this awful loneliness. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It reminds me that the best literature ends up sort of being about everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and science is like that too. Science oh, no doubt. ends up being about everything. Yeah, oh. yeah. You know, I I like too how um, how poetry and science both, you know, like when you move up and down with a with a uh, microscope, right? If you're focusing, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. and you can actually look at something and see depth in it by moving your focus up mm, and down, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, yeah, um, yeah. And and then, you know, um, you talk about microorganisms, you talk about cells, really small things, and then you can talk about systems, and then you can talk about the organism, and then you can talk about the biosphere. But it that the same thing's happening in poetry, right? So mm -hmm. them together, they can mm -hmm. they can be very small and they can expand mm -hmm. together. It's it's, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's a great point, Susan. I think they both involve a lot of metaphorical thinking. I mean, they, yes. they both operate by way of metaphor, really. I and mean, that's how we understand. That's how we start uh, the universe. I mean, just the concept of the universe has to be a metaphor because we can't take it in. You know what I mean? So imagine something you do know and think of it bigger or think of it in this other way. And then you have the universe because we can't comprehend it normally. We have to use earth-like terms, you know? So I think that's always yeah. the, the task of, of either explaining or um, consoling, <laughs> you know, whichever, you know, the, you know, the old, uh, you know, the old, the old uh, saying is, you know, art disturbs, science consoles, right? But actually they both do both, <laughs> you know what I mean? Really. Yes, I, yeah. I know a lot of people in science who don't understand physics at that level too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like i wouldn't even go near physics i mean i i took it i took mm -hmm. it and right well right, tracy right. and i had to take it yeah yeah but... <laughs> i did i did too i did too yeah right I you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> and susan i was just going to say when you were talking about the microscope and focusing i remember when i was teaching biology students would focus on the wrong thing like they'd find oh, this piece yeah. of dust and they'd be like that's the cell and i'm like no and it got me thinking like that poem where sometimes we get so focused in ourselves and we realize that there's so many things that are way bigger than we are. Right. Yeah, and so yeah. I, I think it's my age, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm coming around more to take putting things in perspective. You know, when you're mm -hmm. younger, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. kind of have a thing about going, but everything's horrible and my life is over because, right, right. Happened. you know, as you get older, you get that more perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, good yeah, point. I think that's, good point. I think that's, I think that's a very good point. You know, I think her idea about that singularity too. I mean, I love that image of just all everything on everything we know to exist being in that super dense ball or point point. Maybe it's like a, a, a minuscule point of matter and it explodes. And you know, it makes us again like a lot of the other poems. We're all made of the same stuff. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we should treat because we're all the same stuff. Really, we're all the same in that respect. So we should respect everything. You know what I mean? 
the planet, right. the other people. In fact, anything that happens, any any matter at all, should deserve our respect because we're, we're the same stuff. Right. Um, I have one more thought too. Right. <laughs> that is one packing job. <laughs> right. It, it, it boggles you know, the mind. Yeah. It's almost, I mean, like, like what I go to, cause I can't even go that much. Right. But what I go to is, is how, um, DNA is packaged. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. so it's, it's, oh. it's like a knitting project mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where you have, you have the DNA strand and, and then it, you know how it's wound kind of helix it's yeah double helix thing yeah how it's yeah. packed it's like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow um but but a universe <laughs> getting packed <laughs> yeah that's it boggles the mind <laughs> that's that's a complicated um... oh somebody put a link in the uh... oh oh good what is it dr katie mag oh, explores oh. with end of the universe with science and medicine. Oh, how interesting. A link. How it's, interesting. Just, it's just a link to her book. Um, uh -huh. She is just an amazing, uh, relatively young astrophysicist mm -hmm. who has a way of mm -hmm. explaining mm -hmm. incredibly complicated. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. And, mm -hmm. and so instead wow. of talking wow. about the beginning of the world, she's talking uh -huh. about the end of oh, the world. Oh, how, how it's going to end, huh? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, wow. I'm going to just click on it so I can have it for later. Yeah, um, yeah. just uh, because, just, yeah, you always need more stuff to read. You do. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so great to have, um, to know, you know, I mean, it's so great to know about the Poetry Foundation site. And oh, it's it's a treasure, oh, isn't it? A it's treasure, a treasure. Yeah. yeah, it really is something else, isn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, that's something that's unique about our country. When I've gone looking for um, online poets from Australia and New Zealand, there's a paywall to uh, access interesting. Interesting. a lot of people's work, which I understand because poetry is, uh, it always requires a day job. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But... Uh, we have access to so much yeah. for free. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's amazing. So uh, we could just keep you poking at the Padlet, but we wanted to give you a chance to do to some, write. some writing. Yes. So um, if you are old school and you need a piece of paper and a writing tool, got it. Got it. Get those. <laughs> um, I am going to just write on my computer. Mm -hmm. And Tom is mm -hmm. going to uh, lead us through this. Yeah. So I, I think we should do a free write. And let's see, we're at, at um, 135. Let's, uh, let's free write for, um, for 15. No, better, yeah, 15 minutes will be OK. And then for 10 minutes, we'll ask some people to share out either all or a portion of what they've written. OK, so I encourage you to free write. Let your mind go free. The old thing is put your pen or pencil or put your fingers on the keyboard. And just don't stop writing or typing, okay? Don't stop. Your, your, your prompt is, science is. Take that and go. See you in 15 minutes. Thank you, Tom.
Friends, we have about one minute left just to give you a, a little, uh, little advance warning, okay? Okay, I think we can stop writing now, dear friends. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. And I would love to hear what people have written. Maybe read uh, what you wrote or a selected portion of what you wrote. Do we have right. anyone brave who'd like to start us off? <laughs> Anybody like to start? Once the ice is broken, don't worry. I'll do it. That's the spirit, Tracy. That's I'll do spirit. it. I don't, I'm not a writer, so I just want to put that out there. It's free. Yeah, this is all free. Yeah. Okay. So science is amazing, continuing, conflicting, energizing, and engaging. Ah. Science is where I devoted my life and the helps mm -hmm. of engaging others. Mm -hmm. Science is great discovery as well as countless failures. Science is never ending. There will always be questions and not enough answers. Mm -hmm. Science is a source of well-being for others, but can also lead to destruction. Science is the hope that we will always use our discoveries for good. Mm -hmm. Science is optimism and the hope that things will get better. Science is frustrating as we may not get the answers that we are looking for. And then I finished with science is for everyone. And then I got stuck. Wow. I really like the repetition on that, Tracy. That's terrific. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. great. That's a great start. I think so too. I think so too. That's a really good one. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Build some momentum as it rolls along. Very good. Yeah. Cool. Anybody else? Linda, you're looking like you want to read there. Yeah, you like yeah. it? Yeah. It's, it's definitely free verse for sure. Just good. Long. Good. Yeah. But but it was great to um, have this opportunity. So I'll just, it's about as, about as much as, as Tracy wrote. Um, science is awesome, a vast topic, part mm -hmm. of the human experience mm -hmm. used to explain things. Mm -hmm. Not believed by everyone, reminds mm -hmm. me of an encounter with a fellow college student. When I asked how she could not believe in evolution, she said, I just don't take those kinds of classes. <laughs> uh, closed her mind to anything outside her current belief system. I, I hope something opened her up to the world of ideas. People refusing to believe in science that can help <clears throat> save their lives when the evidence is right in front of them. 
Science involves studying life, the wonders of animals, how they have extraordinary superpowers, sonar of marine animals, dog sense of smell, x-ray vision of bees, experience the world in different ways. Science involves the study of very large things and very small things. It reminds me of the awesome Powers of 10 video by Charles and Ray Eames. Science is fun and beautiful and hard and rewarding and essential to making our lives better. It's structured trial and error. Mm, nice. nice, nice. Wow, yeah. That's a nice rangy, nice rangy poem. Right? I like yeah. that. Rangy yeah. is, a, is right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's really good. Well, I really like it. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Great stuff, great stuff. Oh, and Next thanks. contestant. Yes, yeah. Mia? Yeah. All right. Sarah, thanks, thanks to both of you for being brave enough to read your stuff. And also, thanks, Tom, for giving us such a long period of time to write. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give you some time. Yeah, I, I, stopped, I stopped a while ago. <laughs> Too long for me. <laughs> well, I haven't done that so. kind of free writing in a long time, and it took a while for me to get started. Get it going. It's yeah. a really good exercise. I'd forgotten. Good. And when I was writing, I found, you know, part of the, the challenge, um, I think, for us um, putting science into a poetic form mm -hmm. is the fact that it's difficult to explain the concepts without having the same vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, a long time ago, I read a book called uh, Napoleon's Buttons, which I really recommend. It's a uh, written quite a while ago. I don't know, Tracy, mm -hmm. is it still all accurate? I think it is because it's pretty mm -hmm. basic. But there's uh, in the beginning, they're talking about different kinds of molecules. And um, mm -hmm. they say that for a honeybee, right, mm -hmm. they can, they sense the difference between a queen bee and a worker bee by pheromones. And mm -hmm. the molecule is exactly the same, except for where an OH is placed. And the molecule, whether it's the end carbon or the second to the end carbon, mm. which is such a small, small difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's astounding that such a tiny, tiny difference can make such a big change. Mm -hmm. But how would you explain that in a poem without having the same kind of vocabulary? Mm -hmm. So that was part of mm -hmm. what I was thinking, you know, the challenge mm -hmm. of, of being able to express the, the magic and the wonder and the feeling that you have your finger on the pulse of the universe <clears throat> without boring people mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. by going into all the extra stuff that you kind of got to know. And then um, the other thing I was thinking about is um, uh, Dr. John Snow, I think I was trying to remember the name of the guy who was the first to figure out the cholera bacteria mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. in the 1800s. And mm -hmm the um, difficulty he had getting the establishment to listen to him mm -hmm. because at the time they thought that these dangerous diseases were caused by um, <clears throat> um, seasoned dental might know. I was trying to remember that also. Was it miasma? Was it ether? They thought there was this thing in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. right? They, they, weren't, they weren't aware yet of this kind of bacterial component to um, the illness. And the, if there was a way to help more people understand that magic and that beauty, that incredible complexity, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. in a sense, amazing. Mm -hmm. If it was a way for more people to under, get that, that concept, then it might be easier for us to move forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in having more people <clears throat> be willing to open their minds to what we're starting to learn mm -hmm. as we continually learn more and to break away from the feeling that a lot of people have that science is hard and it's mm -hmm. opaque and not really worth trying to mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that sort of distrust of science mm -hmm. gets in the way of um, mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. progress mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those are great thoughts Mia yeah I that's agree great. with you I agree yeah Tom would you mind mm -hmm. if I read just a little no, bit let, of let's, let's hear it let's hear it yeah if you'll recognize my favorite theme these days okay <laughs> science is the matter of the meat the meat of life of me of my adorable grandson ah. of the shining eyes and fierce attention mm. 
Mm. He began in science and the buzzing busyness of his multiplying and dividing being took shelter in the harbor of my daughter who mm. came to being in the home I am. Science is the explanation for the magic, and it is all magic, the bringing to life and the letting go. Wow, that's terrific. That's terrific. Yeah, yeah, wow. I have a grandson. Yeah, dang, that's really good. Good for you. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, I love the way you framed that, Marion. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. We have time for, for more voices. I, I think I've- I, two, I'll two, say two one, Tom. Okay, good, do it, Susan, yeah. Um, I ran out of steam at the end, although- <laughs> Me <laughs> too, me too. <laughs> um, science is dancing with scales, a balance of heavy metals and light rays, a beckoning to ask why, to gaze high with glorious sight and to lower our lashes to sea depths below. Science is full of questions, bits and parts that assemble to a whole, never ending, always seeking. Science gives to the vessel of knowledge as water fills a goblet. Wow. Wow. I nice. love that. Poetic poetry circles, they would do this. <laughs> That's what you do when a poem is really great. <laughs> I loved it, Susan. That's great. You are uh, you have a you have a poetic way in your writing anyway. I've noticed that with other things you've written. Oh, you have thanks. a natural you have a natural flair for that. You really do. You really <laughs> it's do. just it's nice. fun. It's fun. It fun. I don't it get to. I, I don't. Well, you know, yeah. Marian, I mean, the writing you guys have to do in your discipline is, is of such a different nature. You know. Yeah. 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 Wow. wow. Great stuff. Well, great stuff. This has been great. Um, Go ahead. I'm going to put the Padlet link in the. Uh, chat again just because it is stock full of so very many poems mm -hmm. and if you're hungry for more after yeah. this taste uh you're welcome to crash around there exactly. um exactly. Yeah. i'm so glad susan that you asked us to do this again mm -hmm. it's great. always yeah. very fun mm -hmm. i i just hope you keep doing it because i i just think it's so needed and um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and precious and uh mm -hmm. i i enjoy it and yeah. um so if you're willing we want to keep having mm -hmm. you every year oh it's great fun it's great fun yeah yes. yeah i i might add also you know mariam we have a uh a women's history month uh and policy right. coming up and since uh, a lot of us here i think are women if you're interested in typing up what you wrote today or even you know tweaking it a little bit and sending it to me, we could probably fit it into our first story anthology, which will become up in March. That that's so, great. And I I, they, because I, seeing that most of us are women here, I, I'm presuming anyway. At least by the, by the names, <laughs> I'm guessing most yeah. people are identifying as. I think that's right. I think I, if I if, if that's a fair thing to say, um, yep. do send it. Do send send them to me. I will put my email in the chat. And the theme for that event is really loose. It's, it's loose, yeah. celebrating women who tell stories. Oh, yes. And yeah. we can all yeah. be women who are telling stories. That's what I'm thinking. Whether it's about science, it could be about anything. But I'm thinking it, for that, her story, I mean, anyone who identifies as a woman, bam, let's hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's hear it. So that means all you guys. All right. So, <laughs> so I got my email. I just popped it in the chat. It's just T-Z-M-A-N at wccnet.edu. Um, I'm also in the Writing Center all the time, too, if you're on campus. I'm uh, rattling around in there Monday through Friday. <laughs> so stop by if you want, yeah. <laughs> really fun, guys. Thanks so much, all of you. So really thank you, much. everyone. Thank you. This is uh, a thank really you. nice session. And thank you, Tom and Mariam, uh, again, pleasure. very yeah. much so. All right, guys, enjoy the weekend. Have a nice Great day, day and enjoy okay. the sunshine. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. See you all around, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.